Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I didn't even give you, I gave you zero prep time today. No. Zero. Uh, I was like, you know what? It. I got something for you. We, we everyone, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Dirt to Dust presented by Outlaw Off-Road. We, ladies and gentlemen, have had zero prep time today. We just got on here and I hit the freaking record button. I was like, <laughs> this you know is what? absolutely true. We're going to have a little bit of fun today. We couldn't even, we were like trying to come up with ideas. I was like, you know what? Let's talk about some stuff. I'm just going to hit record um, and let's go for it. We're going to comm- commemorate, commiserate. We're going to commiserate by commiserate. commemorating. <laughs> we're going to commiserate. <laughs> Our yeah. last episode on this YouTube channel, on the actual, when we started this, we kind of gave it its own little YouTube channel, but I think it's gotten a life of its own now, and we're going to move this all over now to the Outlaw Offroad YouTube channel, which makes a lot of sense because, man, how much, how often do we send people over to those those videos on the Outlaw channel with, like, the Let's Get After It's and, and all mm-hmm. those videos, and it's just, it's all the time, so. All the time, now, yeah. Now it'll be easier, easier transition. So um, we are either we already have or we're in the process of moving. This is episode number. Is this forty, Caleb? This, this is forty-one. Number? Sweet forty-one. Night as yeah. in nineteen forty-one. Jeep since nineteen forty-one. Sorry, Bronco yeah. people. This is a special um, edition. It's the Jeep commemoration episode <laughs> by commemorating us going to a new channel. All the episodes will be over there. Uh, they either already are or they're going to be soon. So all forty previous to today. Um, are going to be over there, and then this one will also be on both. And I think we're going to then just start posting only, correct me if I'm wrong here, to the Outlaw Off-Road channel. Is that right? That is correct. Um, Everything as of Wednesday morning has now been shifted over to the Outlaw Off-Road channel. Um, That can be found at youtube.com slash the at symbol, the Outlaw Off-Road. Um, Everything is uploaded there, all 40 episodes at one time. um, I kind of bombarded (laughs) YouTube. Uh, Hopefully the algorithm doesn't hate me for that. But um, yeah, everything's over there. Any episodes that you might have liked or want to go catch again or rewatch, they're there. As always, Spotify, Apple, um, anywhere you want to listen to your favorite podcast, nothing changed there. Um, There's still a Dirt to Dust Facebook page. I'm still going to continue posting on that. we're just moving the main channel of the visual side to the Outlaw Off-Road because we are Outlaw Off-Road. Outlaw Off-Road is Dirt to Dust podcast. They are synonymous. So you are not it wrong. makes sense. You are not wrong at all. Okay. Yeah. And Speaking- we're also commemorating me figuring out how to finally use my microphone today. <laughs> I finally figured well, that, that out. and uh, I'm noticing some uh, new decor, a little bit of a little different look on the studio. Yeah. So, yeah. So. I've got it a little bit bigger now. Um, I moved, kind of moved everything around. Um, Get a little more, a little more energy going on, a little more movement, a little more standing. Um, I was actually gonna, uh, I'll, I'll do it next week. I was gonna bring a little, uh, one more decoration in to commemorate. This is the commemoration episode to commemorate the start of college football season and bring in one of my Ohio mm-hmm. State Buckeye, yeah, yeah. the future 2024 yeah. 2025 national champions. Sorry to any of you X again and Georgia bull puppy fans and <laughs> I would say Florida State Seminoles but they just eliminated themselves from playoff contingent last weekend so I'm sorry to all you Seminole fans joke they all choked it was terrible awesome game though over in Ireland I know you're not a good college football guy but they played over not in huge, Dublin no. Ireland and freaking Georgia Tech like game winner field goal somebody said it was the most watched I don't know. It wasn't the most watched college football game of all time, but like the most watched foreign football game of all time. Hmm. Some stupid, stupid viewership level. And um, Georgia Tech gave gave that audience uh, something to uh, to cheer about. I know I was watching a little bit of it in the stadium. There was freaking packed. Like it's crazy how much Europeans love American football. But anyway, we're yeah. not a football podcast, but we are going to throw that in there. So maybe next weekend we'll we'll see how. Ohio State does against their cream puff competition. I think they're playing Akron. Um, yeah, this week is, it's a warm up yeah. game. It, it is. I, I know what it is. I know what college football is. But every single other contender is doing the same thing. All of them are doing it. Um, so I'm just yeah, we're going to get up to the mountains and, and catch a Mountaineer game. And, and yeah, I'm you're an App State boy. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not. They're Look, not, I like you know, App State. I mean, they're I, not I like, like them huge a lot. conference or anything, but they play a great game. But I like them ever since the day they beat Michigan. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry you don't understand the greatest rivalry in all of sports, not just college football, but all of sports. The Ohio State team up north, a.k.a. South Canada University, 
is the greatest rivalry in all of sport. I, I don't. I, it just is. It's not. There's nothing else that even touches it. So, all right, time to get back to off road. Let's uh, let's jump right in here and get this episode going, shall we? When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. Man, every time I think about changing that intro, I watch it again, and I'm like, man, this is a cool freaking intro. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll update it eventually. Uh, I, know, I would like to update it now that I've got some better filming equipment and do something a little more professional, but I like it. It still looks good. Yeah, but we want to update it for different reasons. I just get antsy, like, trading in a truck every six months, and you just want to, yeah. like, oh, I got a new camera. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I am on my – thanks to you, I am on the new camera today. We are not filming with – um. I'm getting to your level now. I was filming no on – it was a camera, nice huh? – I mean, it was a nice streaming camera, but it wasn't to the level of, like, you know, this big, nice little Fuji setup we have here. Yeah. Um, took us a little while yesterday, but we got it, we got it going, and it, I like it. It doesn't make me look any better. That's not possible. But it does make the overall thing seem better. Um, yeah, you so look a little sharper, I'm, look a little, yeah, little that's clearer. Gonna, so, yeah. That's what I'm going to go with. You can see the outlaw <clears> look on <throat> my T-shirt a little bit better. Yeah. Um, full disclosure for this episode, I am under the effect of um, cough medicine drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Did it hit you too? Dude, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about Jeep Invasion a little bit now that it's over, but... I don't know if I came home from Jeep Invasion and got some kind of crud or if like my son, my son started school two weeks ago. He started early. He's in a private mm-hmm. school here in Greensboro and they start earlier. And uh, he had a little bit of something. So I don't know if I got it from him picking it up because he's a little freaking germ bomb. All kids are. Oh, yeah. Um, or, or that. But I got it. I picked it up a couple of days ago. The wife picked it up, too. <clears throat> I've been... Um, uh, I've been having it. Apparently I was snoring like a freight train last night. Didn't know that. Woke up middle of the night. Like, where's my wife? <laughs> she wasn't in the bed. She's like, you were snoring. I was like, I don't even felt like I moved. Yeah. I legit must have been like passed out under, mm-hmm. I was on like NyQuil and all that. So I was like, you know, I'll go somewhere else and sleep. Like that almost never happens, but it sure as crap did happen last night. And well, what's um, crazy is that I don't, know, I don't know where um, I got it from, but Brittany is, is kind of feeling the same way, a little bit cruddy, but uh, her work has started asking people to stay home because now there is suddenly a um, another COVID wave coming through and people are testing pox. positive for COVID. COVID it's like pox. a lot. Um, so they're telling their you people like, have if COVID? you don't feel well at all, like stay home, take a COVID test. But like, mm. yeah, um, and it could be false positive stuff, but um, they're they're not taking. I mean, they're taking major precautions and saying, look, if, you, if you're not feeling well, stay home, work from home, don't. Don't spread the shit around the office. Do you think I have um, COVID, Caleb? I um I hope not because the last time you I was thinking monkeypox. It, it like last time you had COVID, it really put you oh, under ass. So I hope that doesn't my happen again. God, it did, um, dude. Whew. Whew. But uh, no. To this I hope day, not. my wife still no. says I should have gone to the hospital and been on a ventilator yeah, or something. But I was, I was, it was not good. Have. You were in rough shape. <laughs> but but uh, I drove. That was I was I I was in the truck <laughs> halfway to Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam. And I got like halfway. I still know the exit because every time we go to Myrtle Beach, I'm like, that's the COVID exit. That's it. That's the COVID that's exit. <laughs> I turned my butt around. And I came right back home. I was like, man, I'm going to freaking pass yeah. out or something. And no, I, just, I made it I, home and made it to the doctor. And man, they were like, yeah, we're going to give you the whatever it was back then, the little mm-hmm. IV bag of antibodies. Yeah. Or whatever the it was. Infusion bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the infusion bag. And I was like, oh, sweet. Let's do it. And they're like, yeah, come back on Monday. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> this was Friday. Like, oh, yeah, yeah we got to schedule that and get insurance or blah, blah, blah. I was like, dude, I don't – if it's a payment, I'll just pay outright. Like, I was I was bad. Yeah. And no, no I couldn't do it. giving me that I, call. And I was like, all right, cool. What exit are you coming off of? You're like, I'm not. I'm coming home. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it was whew, it was bad. It was real yeah. bad. And she was bad, too. But the worst of it 
was I'm pretty sure, again, the little germ bucket that he is, pretty sure I know that our son had it. And back then he was, I think he was, he it was, we didn't even have his birthday party that year because it was going to be the weekend of his birthday party. And he still yeah. remembers that. I have to make it up to him every year now. Um, and I, he was walking around the house. He was fine. Totally fine. Hmm. I'm talking like, he was like, that was it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> little freaking sucker i'm like kids Dude. are surprisingly resilient for this kind to of that stuff. they were and and luckily you know i'm not you know 85 years old i wasn't in a high risk category and i was able to get over it but it took it took a few days so but i don't i don't think this is it it could be I and mean, who knows how many times i've had COVID since then i just haven't gone and tested for it. that's literally the only time i was ever tested for it it was just because yeah. i was at the urgent care and they tested me for it so oh well yeah, parts they were um, to as well but i say that to talk about jeep invasion it's over we're now in a post-apocalyptic Jeep invasion world. <laughs> um, it was, I think it was what kind of I talked about last week, but it was a little bit better. So I know last week I talked about a lot of these shows having increased attendance, um, but maybe some of the vendors not selling as much. I did notice a lot of the vendors didn't bring stuff. Mm -hmm. They were doing orders and then like shipping them or whatever. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's a way around the Tennessee state sales. I don't know how that works. I heard somebody say that at one point a couple of years ago, like, oh, we're just not going to sell any product here. Yeah, that makes sense. I still sense. think you probably have to because Tennessee state sales tax of the show is 9%, which yeah, pretty much wipes lot. out most, if not any, because uh, you have to pay tax. It mm -hmm. wipes out any 10% discount you're going to get. So I know they're looking for ways around having to do that. So a lot of them didn't do that. Um, but I will say the upper area. So for those of you who haven't been going to Jeep Invasion for a long time, several years ago, where you now park, right outside, like if you come down through the parking lot and you see the big dock where the show and shine used to be, and you kind of go to the right to the main entrance or the left out to Teaster and then Skybridge, that used to be the outside show and shine as well as the outside vendor area. And it wasn't huge. It was two rows. So it was like four rows of vendors. You know, one the row in the middle was back to back, and then there was a row on the outside facing in. So you had four rows of vendors creating – two rows to walk and it was basically just a big O and they had a big screen out there with advertising on it. But up top now they've, it's like, it's this gigantic parking lot that they've kind of, it's perfect. I think I'm going to go at this got to be at least three times as big as it was. Yeah. Has to be, has to oh, I agree. Be. And it, it's not like it used to be where, you know, the no names and the little guys were outside, you know, sweating it out, getting hot, steaming, sunburning, and all the big boys were inside. Mm -mm. It's not like that anymore. It's a little mixed um, up. Now. It's completely mixed up. There is no rhyme or reason other than somebody, you know, I think for being outside, you're a company that maybe has too big of something to go inside or it's too much or you don't want to quite spend as much because inside booths are more money. I mean, it just, yeah. they just are. Um, not a ton more, but enough to make a difference. So there was, I mean, People were out there doing installs. All the install people were out there. Like Alpine was out there. Uh, Stinger was out there. Uh, there was some lighting and LED companies out there. Next Venture Motorsports was out there. There was a ton of companies out there. AccuAir was there with their gigantic, you know, semi truck. Uh, they were all out there, big displays, and there really wasn't a lot of empty room. So, you know, say what you will about Jeep Invasion. You got to kind of give it to the organizers a little bit there for that show getting so big. Um, you know, whether you want a booth or whether you don't want a booth, and that's something we've kind of grappled with, mm -hmm. there was a lot of booths there. Um, now, the question of interaction and stuff, you know, who knows? There, But there was a lot of booths there, and there was a lot of freaking people there. A lot of people. I mean, give up trying to find a parking spot within a decent, you know, half-day hike. I mean, it's just not. Um, so there was a lot of people, a lot of Jeeps, a lot of vendors. So I think the show itself was bigger. Um and a couple of the vendors that I talked to said that their sales were good. They were good. good. They were satisfied. They were happy with their sales level. I don't think they were like, you know, breaking monumental sales records, which how are you going to do that in this economy anyway? Yeah. But if the economy is bad and you want stuff, you're going to probably go to a show and try to get the best deal you can. And if somebody's giving a deal that negates that is above and beyond that 9% sales tax or whatever your sales tax is where you live, yeah, you're probably going to go to the show. So, yeah, um, I think it was a good show. I think I think if you were asking the organizer, they would probably say it was a success. It was pretty much just as busy. I went inside once, and that was only to see kind of certain people. Um, but it was pretty. It was pretty dang busy. Friday afternoon is when I went inside. Yeah, Friday afternoon. Um, so I was outside 
Thursday a little bit and Friday a little bit because, I mean, mostly the people I wanted to talk to and go hang out in their booth and see them, most of them were outside, funny enough. And it really, it was hot. It was warm, but it wasn't like stupid hot. I mean, we had a good, we had a good, a good time. And then we found a um, pretty freaking great Mexican place, Azul on Teaster, which is right over oh, there by yeah. Junction 35. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. That place is I had great. a Nashville hot <laughs> chicken taco. Ooh, yes. It had like cheese and then like this lime thing and the crema on it and the chips with the sea. And I was like, and of course, you know, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So who's not drinking Tecate or I think I had a dose of key. Who's mm -hmm. not drinking? Who's not drinking? I mean, I was drinking. And I was there with uh, Wes Childers, who's the sales director for North Carolina uh, for Outlaw, and Ben Mayer, who is essentially the GM uh, in charge uh, for Josh in Charlotte, North Carolina. We had done some show things together. Josh was with us earlier that day, but had to go get some stuff taken care of. And was actually, Josh was getting the Stinger High 10 installed in Steelicon, the Hellcat swapped JL. Which is if you haven't if you've ever been to an outlaw show you've seen this Jeep. Oh, it's yeah. freaking sweet. <laughs> it's one of the more prominent Holy Jeeps out there for sure. My God, it's so beautiful. I'll never tell that to him to his face. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he knows what I think about that thing. That thing is absolutely freaking sweet. Um, so much power. I mean, you can hear it. But he had that thing in a booth, and um, so while they installed it, we kind of hung around. They went to go get lunch, and then we came back after lunch and, and picked it up. But Man, I, I think it was a great show. I know you weren't there, but I'm sure you saw. Oh, I saw from your standpoint, all the things. Did you yeah. think it was more social media posting? The same? Let, what did you think from like what you saw people posting on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of stuff? So I noticed something really interesting, actually. Um, for the first time, I think I saw less influencers posting. Uh, you had your typical really? people in the booths. Yeah, if they were in a booth, like they were posting. Um, but I saw more like everyday average person content um, coming through. Um, it, it seemed really cool, actually. It, it seemed a lot more authentic. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very like stingy with that word. Uh, but it did seem more authentic. Um, I want to say the number I heard was over fifteen thousand jeeps there, which means probably thirty to forty thousand people. Um, on you know on in pigeon yeah. forge gatlinburg in a given given time um no I, I think from the manufacturer standpoints i feel like there were a lot of really cool companies there that were present that i haven't seen at jeep invasion before um next venture being one of those um and i think yeah it's pretty cool that outlaw had a part in helping bring them to jeep invasion which is pretty awesome and we'll be seeing those guys again here in a couple weeks for trail days but Yes, we will. No, it, it um it seemed pretty cool. And then on top of that, like the biggest thing I heard all weekend was that the weather was phenomenal. Uh, it was. Normally, it's in the upper nineties, scorching. It's kind of miserable, especially if you're outside. Um, but I was hearing from other vendors that like the weather was fantastic. It was pretty comfortable, um, and it almost makes me think about wanting to get a booth outside next year. Maybe team up and do like a super booth. That's what I was thinking. Um, yep. And just really go all out. And then that way we can drive around. We can do a giveaway again, which I do want to touch on the giveaway here in a second, too. Um, but that way we are able to move the vehicles in and out. We still have a great presence. We can still do all the fun things that we want to do. Because mm -hmm. um, I think this time next year we're going to have probably a couple new rigs come to the outlaw scene. We've got a couple ambassadors that oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we are. I'm, I'm really excited to bring on board. We've got a couple of really big builds that we're working on with multiple shops. Um, and I think we, I, I definitely want to encourage those people to be, be there with us and, and have something to kind of show off the LJ. I mean, it'll be done. Hopefully. <laughs> Great. Now uh, you've said it now. It's not going to be done. No, Great. no, 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 no. Great. Now you're about to go crack the frame. Well done. Yeah, we're, 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 we're knocking it out closer and closer, but Ryan anyways, says it's close. Um, Ryan tells me it's close. It is. It, it absolutely, it absolutely is. It's, it's getting very close to the point of me just needing to bring drive shaft tires and do a. I mean, assist, but. it's to the point where you're sending me pictures of graphic mock-ups. That, yeah, uh, that's not I, far yeah. away. That's close. No, uh, if, if yeah, I'm thinking so about close. wrapping it and throwing outlaw graphics on it, then we're we're, we're getting, getting serious. There. So. We're getting there. We're getting there. Which uh, is good. Yeah, but speaking of, um, you and I kind of had a part in in hosting something with Charlotte, uh, the Great Smoky Mountain giveaway, and I, I really wanted to know how did that do. Um, I know there was a lot of input. There was no, I don't want to call it scrambling, but there was, there was a lot of really cool last second decisions that we just kind of went with our gut on and uh, said, yeah, all right, look, if we're going to make this 
take this from one step to the, the next level and, and really make a presence here? How do we do this? And uh, I feel like we executed it pretty well, but in person, how did that turn out? Well, the, 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 the last kind of quote unquote last minute change was only because it went from being like, well, this is just one store doing this to, wow, we really need to get this bigger. Like, mm -hmm. and huge, huge shout out to all of the people that gave us stuff because a lot of those next venture motorsports, RPM steering, Thor's lightning, and many, many more were actually giving out raffle tickets in their booths. Mm hmm. Um, when they saw people in outlaw stuff or whatever, went to that that was the num number one thing I heard, which really made me feel good. Is I went to a lot of vendor booths, and they'd be like, "Oh, where's your booth?" And I'm like, "Oh, we don't have one. We're doing the branding. We're doing the giveaway." And they're like, "Man, I see a ton of your. I just see your logo every time I turn around." I was like, "Oh, great. That's that's wonderful. That means we're doing our job, <laughs> and, and that people and that we are working right, and yeah. we're top of mind when people think you know off road you know sales and installation. That's that's our goal." Yeah. So that was really, really awesome. And I don't think it ended up being very, very big. Like it was, it was pretty close. The Moto Built one was on Friday night. Of course, that's Moto Built. That's freaking massive. And it was online and it had months and months of pushing. Mm -hmm. We really weren't that far off of that. And a lot of that was thanks in large part to two things. Well, it was really three things. I mean, a lot of outlaws were there mm -hmm. scouring the streets, giving out stickers, selling, you know, getting t shirts, get, finding people, tracking people down, going to the parties, showing up. Um, but the biggest thing would be the vendors that, that actively helped in their booths. And then all those manufacturers and vendors that gave product away fit a party. Um, this I, dude, I can't even, there's so many, like it's crazy. Um, so definitely yeah, could have done it without them and it ended up being like 20 plus, I, I forget how yeah, many it was into the 20s into that design, but it was a mm -hmm. lot, um, yep, thousands absolutely. of dollars worth of giveaways, which is awesome. Uh, hopefully that's something. We and then during the show, they were giving us more stuff. Yeah. Like Ben and Josh and Wes, everybody would go to the booth to get the product, and they would be like, "Oh, here's a bunch of T-shirts. Just go give them away. Here's a bunch yeah. of koozies." And we were <laughs> we were making swag bags, and we were just giving out swag bags. Like I was driving around um, Quaker Steak, and mm -hmm. if I saw you an Outlaw T-shirt, I was giving out swag bags. Like yeah. here's your raffle ticket. Here's a swag bag, and it had yep. like it had some stickers in there. It had a koozie in there. It had a hat in there, and it wasn't just an Outlaw swag bag. It was like all these companies pitching in to put stuff in there and, and allowed us to do that. So I think it was, yeah. it was really, really good. And Josh sent me, I had to come home on Saturday morning. So I wasn't there for the drawing, but Josh sent me a video, um, a bunch of video from, uh, down South off, uh, down South off road and adventure. Yeah. Um, Jeremy and Kim, Kim was repping an outlaw tank top pretty much all week. <laughs> um, I believe that she believe absolutely they're was. Awesome people. Yeah. They're, they're, they're great people. Uh, hopefully they're listening to this. Thank you guys. Appreciate you as always. Um, I know they were a little upset with me last year. I had the race car and was giving them rides around Quaker Stake, and this year I had the four by E. So sorry I didn't have the vroom brooms and the horsey much, horses. Much quieter, <laughs> As a little bit, a little bit quieter. But I'll tell you, Quaker Stake was way more traffic this year. It was Good. way more traffic. It was freaking, and they, they had cops down there. Like if they recognized your Jeep, I got stopped once by a cop. Like just so you know, we know who you, we know your Jeep, and uh, we're only gonna let you go through here one time. It's like, dang, I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> what about separate occasions? Like if I do this and leave and come back, can I do that? Right. Like one, one at a time. And yeah. I wasn't going to freaking park. Like parking was just insane. So I definitely mm -hmm. think from that standpoint, it was it was a decent amount more busy um, this year. Yeah, I, th I think so. Definitely more people than in years past. Definitely more people good. than years past. So That's what we like was, to hear. It was a good event. The giveaway went great. Um, you know, we'll see for next year. I, I, I am – leaning a little bit more and more i think to the outside setup i think um, yeah i just think that's you know, dan the way to dan go. and next venture um, had a mister so i'm like if we yeah. can get some misters it was pretty it was pretty i sat yeah in front that's of like that would be pretty solid oh, and then awesome. we can participate in the quaker sake thing uh i mean it's kind of twofold we love to see the industry grow and and people being involved and you know the worst thing that we want to see is jeep events die off completely um, right. like, like there's been another, um, rod run is in pigeon or was in mm -hmm. pigeon forge every year wow. that's now been canceled. Um, the only other big show in pigeon forge that's like really, really big is uh, ponies and the Smokies, which is yeah. a Mustang show. And there's no telling, I mean, Mustang, we could Myrtle beach is, is very close to being shut down forever. Um, so we don't want to see those things happen in our industry. We want to see it continue to grow. Um, so I'm pretty happy to know that it's growing. It's doing well. People were happy this year. Sales were, were pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I definitely want to probably have a booth next year uh, outside. 
I'll probably do some design, some custom raffle tickets with our logo on it and, uh, you know, and continue the great Smoky Mountain giveaway. Um, I think that's super cool. And, uh, well, and let's um, remember the reason these events get shut down by and large is people acting like freaking idiots. Yes, absolutely. Like that's what happened to a lot of these truck events. That's what's happened to a lot of these places is people go there and they act a freaking fool and then law enforcement has to step in and then eventually, you know, local ordinances get passed and, you know, it basically makes them, you know, we've seen that for some places. Um, some of the bike weeks have gotten shut down. Some mm-hmm. of the truck things have gotten shut down. And it's not because the event wanes or yeah. or there's lack of attendance or lack of vendors. It's because the local uh, government, the local law enforcement, whatever, just got fed up. And you never yeah. know what the straw is going to be that breaks that camel's back. So, you know, I'm all for having a good time. You know, I'm all for, you know, riding down the right side of, of the parkway and getting ducks thrown at me or whatever or throwing them back or whatever. It's kind of my one time where I'm like, I won't, I won't, you know, throw you a bird for throwing at a bird at me because uh, it's because it's cheap invasion, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, things, right. you know, it's different. You know, there's a couple shows a year that are different and then Jeep invasion is one of them. So, um, but there's got to be a limit. Like, you know, that we got to be, let's don't be too stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's fun, but you know, let's limit it to, you know, and I know this sounds weird for me, but like, you know, not doing burnouts and jumping four by ease in parking lots. <clears throat> Kayla Forbes. I've, yeah, I've but what you're talking about. <laughs> that got brought up this year, by the way. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. We don't want evidence for uh, future court proceedings. But there is, you know, you can go out there and have a good time and and do it within the confines of the law where mm-hmm. they continue to welcome us back year after year because, I, you know, Pigeon Forge is a great place to do that. Um, you know, you can complain all you want about it being in the 90s. If that show was anywhere else in the South, it would be way worse. Oh, you know, 100%. Because we absolutely. are in the mountains, we get a little bit of reprieve from that mm-hmm. with some bit of elevation. So, you know, you're in the valley there. Um, so we do get some reprieve for that. Um, so, and, and it would be way, way worse if it was somewhere else. So um, be thankful that it's not worse. <laughs> that yeah, it is 100%. That it is what it is. So I think as long as we continue to, you know, go out there, have a good time, have a great time, have fun, enjoy yourself. Go get some stuff that's on a deal, you know, whatever, you know, lights, bumpers, whatever, suspension, anything, but you know, do it within the confines of you know following the law. Then we're gonna have a we're gonna have a great Smoky Mountain Jeep Club, Jeep Club invasion, whatever it is, for many many years to come. Because you know now yeah. they've added the Bronco Stampede. Uh, I just saw today. I don't. I think there's gonna be a Bronco Stampede now to go with um, New Jersey Jeep Invasion now. Okay, that makes Same sense. Thing. Yep, they just mm-hmm. sent out the email today. That New Jersey Jeep invasion registration goes live like the end of September, mm-hmm. and they're doing it in July. Um, and then like the week after or the week before, they're going to do a Bronco stampede along with the on on opposing weekends um, up in New Jersey. And New Jersey is always a great Jeep event if you're from that area. You get up to that one. I mean, it's right there on the beach. They let you, you the, the parking lot is basically on the beach. It's pretty yeah. cool. So that's a cool place to go. And then everybody's adding these Bronco events. So it's not thing as long as we don't just overwhelm them and act like a bunch of freaking idiots. I think, I hope. They're pretty solid. Fingers crossed. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, my my only concern, and I actually heard from more than a couple people that this was happening. My only concern is the truck scene trying to take over these Jeep events. Um, mm-hmm. It's happened. It, it They try to do it in Myrtle Beach um, just because yep. that's squatted truck capital. Um, they try. I know Daytona, they've tried, and trucks get, like, towed out, and, like, they, they literally yep. get asked to leave. Uh, I'm hoping that Pigeon Forge stays true to this and the truck scene doesn't try to run over the Jeep scene over there because that will get things shut down, unfortunately. Luckily, that truck crap is stuck mostly to beach stuff. Maybe the Galveston thing a couple years ago where mm-hmm. somebody freaking died. Yeah. They shut that event down. Uh, but I think that started as a Jeep event and got uh, like a flash mob type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, some truck takeover. There was something in Miami where they did it. There was something... Yeah, Daytona was something like that. So, yeah, yeah, there's been some there's been some things. You know, hopefully by Pigeon Forge being in the mountains and not being very close to that, there's really not a there's not a beach cruise or anything like that. Hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully that keeps that kind of out of it. It hasn't been a problem yet. Um, but to a certain extent, it's just man, there's just so many freaking jeeps. I don't know where how you could invade the invasion cuz it's a <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, well, I mean, it's you're not going to get very crazy. far. I mean, nah. with 40,000 people and 15,000 Jeeps in one area, like, it, it's already a, almost, it's, when I was there last year, it took 
over an hour to go probably two miles up the road. Um, yeah, that's about so right. So it, it's almost gridlock. Yeah. So I was 45 minutes for a half a mile from yeah. Hard Rock to the turn off to go to my condo where I was at. Yeah, I stayed right behind right. in a condo right behind the local goat this year. If you've ever been to lo- the Jeep Invasion, you know the local goat. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I could walk down the hill to local goat. So so I was really close to like where Teaster comes in and that water park hotel and all that. Yeah. Which, but again, you know, it's the first time I've really stayed kind of on the strip. I've always kind of been in a cabin or a condo kind of back off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it took me every bit of 45 to 50 minutes. Now, I wasn't in a hurry either. You know, I yeah, kinda, you know as you should not generally be. <laughs> there, the further <laughs> left in the lanes you go, yeah. the faster you go. You know, if yeah. you're on the right hand side, to a certain extent, up by uh, up by the Hard Rock in that area, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But as you get further down in Pigeon Forge, like going to Gatlinburg, that's where everybody, all the touristy stuff is, and all the parking lots. So everybody sets up chairs, and it is a it is a scene to behold. I will tell you, oh, what. yeah, you can go, you can you can do twenty to twenty five miles an hour in the left side lane, or you can go so slow in the right hand lane that anybody in their right mind could outwalk you. A two-year-old toddler <laughs> could outwalk you in the mile. Like, it's that yeah. slow. But people do that on purpose. So it's, you know, it's part of Jeep Invasion. And, you know, another part of Jeep Invasion, we talked about it a little bit, which is kind of the kind of the topic I wanted to hit on. I wanted to talk a little bit just because I've been – I heard some things at Jeep Invasion. I've heard some things on – just kind of the state of – just kind of the state of the off-road industry, and that was a big piece of it to see it, um, which I didn't actually see it as much as I thought. I have heard some other events mm-hmm. – where a lot of these companies, you know, the economy is not amazing. That's, I'm not telling anybody anything new. And generally speaking, when the economy is bad, events can sometimes have problems filling booth spots. Uh, we've had, you know, we've had a, an event or two cancel um, and, and in some way kind of related to that. Um, mm-hmm. I did not see that even though unprecedented amounts in the last, really since COVID started going away, unprecedented amounts of companies, off-road companies, they've been around for years and years and years. They got bought by these investment companies. Yeah, true. Four-wheel parts, the largest at the time, four-wheel parts chain of four-wheel parts, uh, the largest chain of off-road centers in the in the world, getting sold off for pennies on the dollar because yeah, they, weren't, they weren't a profitable business. Um, now, why that was, yeah, we can speculate, but they, they got sold off. It was pennies on the dollar. Those are facts, not in dispute. And part of that was the sale of Transamerica, which Transamerica was the wholesale side of four-wheel parts. So if you were a shop yeah. and you wanted to buy some four-wheel parts merchandise, you could sign up for a Transamerican account, and they would deliver you the parts you could buy at wholesale rates. That, when when they got bought, that, that got liquidated. It's gone. It doesn't even yeah. exist anymore. And with that was, and, and a lot of people in the industry know these names, but a lot of people, customers, don't know that you know, Rubicon Express was a Trans-American brand. Procomp was a Trans-American brand. Smitty Built, Trans-American brand. And the list goes on and on and on. And Dirt Logic. And if you ever went to a four-wheel yeah. parts store, the, the, the stuff they were putting on display to try to push and sell, those were house brands. Mm-hmm. Now, they aren't brands they created. They're brands they bought. They're brands yeah. that Trans-American, which I think was owned by Polaris at one point. Um, they were brands that they bought. Uh, Poison Spider was another one. A lot of people mm-hmm. don't realize, you know, Larry McRae started Poison Spider. Larry McRae has nothing to do with Poison Spider anymore. Hasn't for years. Sold yeah. that out. Um, all of those. Rubicon Express. I, I still remember the days, you know, mid-2000s. Rubicon Express was considered like <clears throat> good stuff. Pretty good shit. <laughs> it was pretty good stuff. And now it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, um, I'm not even sure it's going to survive. You know? Yeah, even some of the, a lot of those brands are going away. Of now. Yeah. It's, it, you know, a lot of those brands are gone because now there's <clears> so many... When when Clear Lake Capital, which is the investment firm, Wheel Pros, Hoonigan, now they're called Hoonigan, mm-hmm. um, you know, when they came in and bought them, they, you, you can only have so many suspension companies in your pro, in your portfolio. Yep. You can only have so many armor companies in your portfolio before you have to start either keeping the technology, keeping that 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 that, that property that they had, that intellectual property, apply it to other brands, apply it to other parts, and then just shut down that brand. And that's what they did. Um, and four wheel parts has been selling off stores like it's going out of style. If you got a checkbook and you want to own a four and you want a location, you can pretty much go buy an off road store. It yeah. may not be a very good one, <laughs> <laughs> but but you can definitely yeah. buy it out and you can open up your off road store if you've if you've got the money and the and the patience and the and the stones to do it. 
you know, they've been selling them off left and right. I think they've liquidated either right at or even more than 50%. And they were up close to 100 stores at one point. That's a lot. Was, was, was four-wheel parts, yeah. And they have liquidated a very, very, very large part of those just evaporated. And uh, what I have been told is a lot of those people that bought, you know, four-wheel parts was really, really on to this, this warranty that they sold on a lot of their tickets. And it was basically this kind of no questions asked deal. You know, if you have a warranty on a part, you generally are not going to get that taken care of through the shop. If you have a part, you'll say you buy a, you buy a lift kit and you have a shock problem or you have a sway bar problem, you're not going to go, you might go to the shop, but it's not the shop's job to fix a part failure. You know, shops are installed, right. they sell it, they install it. But it's just like if you bought a piece of furniture from Ikea or Walmart and there's a little slip of paper in there that says, hey, if you've got any missing parts, you got a problem, don't go to the retailer. Call us. Call the 800 number. Same thing. But four wheel parts then would sell this warranty and just say, oh, you don't have to do that. We'll just we'll just take care of it. No questions asked warranty or whatever they call it. Outlaw has something similar to that built. We call it the built to last warranty. We have the same thing. It's a good idea. But when they went out and they got sold off, if you bought that warranty. You were out. Sorry. These new <clears> companies. Are, <throat> yeah, I don't even think the new four wheel no parts stores that are still branded as four wheel parts. I don't know that they're legally obligated to fulfill that because it was bought. Mm-hmm. Now, I think maybe if somebody raised enough ruckus and maybe from a legal standpoint, you might have a leg to stand on. But if you go to one of these stores that was bought out by a completely different party, they don't owe you anything. No. And that money that money is just kind of gone. And it sucks, but that is the nature of what happens. And, and every industry goes through this. The automotive aftermarket industry went through this years ago. This 20, 25, 30 years ago, they went through this. And, and it really pared down where there was an overpopulation of manufacturers and vendors. To where now there there kind of isn't there isn't the specialty market you know the drift scene has its own the performance the drag strip guys they have their own but in general automotive aftermarket the number of main actual manufacturers has dwindled um, pretty pretty substantially um, and you can say that's good or bad it whatever it just is what it is and that's what's happening in offer that's all it is but these are big brands you know people don't realize Terraflex is not owned by Terraflex anymore no Terraflex is in the same deal Hoonigan. same yeah. deal. It's all Hoonigan. Mm-hmm. And when I say Hoonigan, it's WheelPro, which WheelPro yeah. is the company that owns um, Fuel Off-Road. Um, they were uh, KMC. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even before that, there was, you know, Fuel and KMC weren't together. WheelPro made them together. WheelPro acquired the other brand that they didn't have. Yeah. And then they went out and acquired, um, I think it was a company called TWC, which got them Black Rhino Wheels and a bunch of other. There was a wheel company um, out of California. And they had a big office in Florida, too. Uh, yeah, Cali, to TWC Cali yeah. Yep. So they bought them and got all those brands. And, it, and it, even at that point, it was all wheels. And then they bought up, uh, they got a hold of Ready Lift, uh, was their suspension brand, which isn't like a full line suspension brand. They don't do, you know, they don't make a lot of stuff. They do a lot of spacer kits and stuff like that. And they do a lot of, it's really weird because they do a lot of spacer kits and level kits. And they do a lot of like big seven, eight, nine inch lifts on trucks, but mm-hmm. not a ton in the middle. But they've got a pretty good line. We we sell their product. We sell it all the time. Yeah, it's very yeah, very popular stuff. product on trucks. Um, unfortunately, I just got an email from them this morning saying they're about to have a price increase, which sucks. But oh well. Um, I mean, that's, so they that's they fell the under the Wheel the Pro beast, brand. Right? Yeah, it is. I mean, it is. Well, I don't know, man. I was having this conversation literally with Jeremy Purick at Rock Crawler a couple days ago, earlier this week, and I'm like, "Here's what I don't understand. You know, these guys they get bought, and let's use Terraflex for an example." Terraflex was always partially, not always, but in the, in the last 10, 15 years, they were partially made overseas. I don't think I'm telling anybody anything they didn't already know or could logically guess. They were somewhat made in the U.S., somewhat made overseas. Now, the, obviously, that percentage has changed since they got bought because big investments come in. They try to streamline things, you know, quote, unquote, the bean counters, right? Mm-hmm. So some of that, a lot of that stuff has been moved overseas where they already had that pipeline on some stuff. Now they have it just for more stuff, right? And... In turn, the valuation of the company dropped pretty substantially. And again, if you want to do the right, if you, if you can do, anybody can find this out with some research, right? It's not hard to find out. But it dropped something by like 50 to 60% or something like that in the, in the valuation of the company. And so we're finding ways as an investment company to make the product cheaper, what they call economies of scale, right? It's, mm-hmm. I always get these emails. You know, we've done our best through efficiencies and economies of scale. That basically means the bean counter's got a hold of, of it, people. That's that's basically what it means. If you've ever oh, seen yeah. Office Space and the bobs come in. <laughs> yeah. What would you say <laughs> you do here? 
Okay. That's what it is. There's bobs. At, at, yes, there's bobs. The bobs are a real thing. So they do this and they figure it out and then and then they have a price increase. And I'm like, I see the price part for part of some of these American companies. I'm looking at Evo. I'm looking at Metal Cloak. I'm looking at Rock Crawler. And they have not had just increase after increase after increase after increase. But they really are staying on top of their, their product. They're, they're staying on top of everything. And maybe because they're independent, they can react faster. So they're doing more incremental stuff. But I was thinking about the other day, I was talking to Jeremy about track bars. And I'm like, you know, about a kit he was uh, going to release later this year. And we were talking about what it's going to have in it, what it's not going to have in it, what it's going to be. We got talking about track bars. And I said, you know, for many, many years, even during COVID, we just sold your track bars because they weren't as expensive as some of the competitors that weren't even as good. Like you've, he's like, well, I'm, and we looked at it because uh, I remembered what they were back in like 2019, 2020. And I saw what they were today. And I was like, that's only like a 10% increase in five years. It's not It was bad. like 11% through COVID. We're talking about pre-COVID to post-COVID, mm -hmm. 11%. Yeah, that's uh, and that's terrible. pretty impressive. That's pretty yeah. impressive. And he says, you know, not going to lie, the, the margin did come down <laughs> in the <laughs> middle there. But, you know, we knew what was going to happen. We knew that it was going to level back out. And we didn't, you know, we're not, you know, we didn't knee jerk to the market. You know, we're just... You know, he was telling me about, you know, the way they acquire some of their parts and stuff, but it's still U.S. And he's like, you know, we just got, we got inventive. We got creative. We stayed on the cutting edge. We were doing stuff a little bit different. And it's enabled us to keep our price, prices down, even though they're not a budget brand by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that their adventure level stuff is on par uh, with anything at that level, if not better, and priced accordingly for yeah. that market. Um, Absolutely. It's not a, you know, it's, it's definitely not... It's definitely not exor exorbitant by any stretch yeah. of the imagination. So to see a company like that that's independent, and, and really you can extend that to Metal Cloak, you can extend that to Evo, you can extend that to companies like Metal Cloak, you can steer smarts. These independent guys that have not sold out, there seems to be a little more, I don't know, continuity may be the word, but there seems to be a little more just stability and continuity there. That they yeah. don't get crazy um, and overreact because they don't have the bobs in there going, you know, what would it, what is it you'd say you do here? And <laughs> you, you just don't have that. Right. So I think there's something to be yeah. said for that. But, well, but I that, know, I know these people are getting phone calls. Oh, they're for sure. Phone they're, calls they're getting, about, you know, they're getting offers. What would it take to get right. you out of here? What would it yeah. take? What would it take? What would it take? I know but, that um, happens and they just yeah. haven't done it. They it just, just reminds me of, um, yeah. No, that reminds me of a, a book I read. Um, what was this guy's name? Simon Sinek. And he's kind of like a goofy guy, but he's um, he makes a good point. And there's a I can't remember if he wrote it or if he referenced it or something, but I just remember his name being associated with it. But it's the finite game versus the infinite game uh, and businesses that are set up in this space that have an infinite mindset that have the mindset that they're not going to sell, that they're going to continue to be an innovator in the industry. They're here to manufacture in America. They're not here to just make the absolute most profit. Um, those are the ones that are going to be sticking around where it's the guys that start off playing the finite game of how can I just compete with everyone and make as much as I can. Um, those are the ones that are getting bought up. And and those are the ones that truthfully, I mean, sorry to say it, but good riddance. Uh, I, I like to see ma American manufacturers do well. I like to see companies that support the industry do well. Uh, and not to say that these other companies that have gone under or have been, been bought out aren't or won't do well. Um, it's just it seems like it's a reoccurring theme that once they get bought out, it's they're on a timeline and you give it four to five years and they're being shut down, um, which just sucks. It really does suck. But that gives the opportunity for manufacturers like Rock Crawler, like Metal Cloak, like Steer Smarts, like Next Venture, like Motobilt, like any of these guys that are producing in-house <clears throat> and really pushing the the industry forward, uh, it, it opens a door not just to continue producing good stuff, but like it's it's getting close to kind of start creating new product. Um, I know Rockcrawler is good about creating new stuff every couple of years and adding SKU numbers. Um, he's doing it right now. He's already bitching yeah. about all the SKUs <laughs> he's going to add for the first of the year. That's how that conversation yeah, started. That that does not ago. surprise me <laughs> at all. Uh, but you know, we're, we're coming up on, on a mid year before generation of Jeep and 
you see the same products over and over again at shows and at, at everyone's got the same stuff. So it's, it's about time to, to see some innovation happen again. And there are companies out there that are absolutely innovating. Um, Motobilt comes to first of mind with the Bob kit, uh, the Bob bed kit for the JT. Um, they're coming out with new stuff left and right. They're really pushing the limits on 3D print technology. Their tele housings are now 3D printed. Um, I love seeing that kind of stuff be pushed in the industry. Um, and I, I'm really excited to see where it goes after this. Um, but yeah, they're, just, they're, they're playing the finite game versus the infinite game. And these guys are, that are doing really well see beyond the, the, the next couple of years and they see the next couple of generation of Jeep and, and where this industry is going and they're, they're responding to that. So I'm, I'm super excited to see that progress. Um, hate to see the companies that get bought out and not doing so well anymore. Uh, and yeah, it just is what it is. Unfortunately. Well, keep in mind that a lot of these companies, well, not a lot, but some of them, the whole goal was to build it to X level and then sell that. That was the yeah, stated I've, goal you know, to, to investors or, or to whoever, you know, backed them when they first got in business. Mm -hmm. The problem may be, I don't know, you get in there and you start shaving, 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 and you, you mix that with not a great economy. You know, my concern is what's going to happen to some of these companies that have to give a return to their investment company and mm -hmm. they don't have the money to do it because yeah. they've stretched it as far as they can stretch it and they can't stretch it. They can't stretch it no mo's. Mm -hmm. um, what's going to happen? Because these investment companies, they have to get their money because if they're not, they're going to break your butt up and sell you in pieces. Mm -hmm. Or they're just going to sell you again. And, and, and you end, then you end up being like the mortgages back in the 2000s where you just get sold from one mortgage servicing company to another, to another, to another, to another. I think it still happens a little bit to this day, but not nearly as much as it used to. That you just get, you end up just getting passed around as a company and you're just so mm -hmm. diluted at that point, you're basically a logo yep. with uh, with an assembly line in China somewhere. And, and you're no different than the crap you get on Amazon or whatever. Um, are there customers for that? Yeah. But now you're you're servicing a customer you never serviced before, or you never even thought about servicing. Yeah. So I think that's the danger there. And I've heard, um, I don't I don't know that it's out in the industry yet, so I'm not going to say too much about it. But I have heard that that is that 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 problem is starting to rear its head. Mm. Um, hate it. I really really hope that it's not as bad as it seems. Because, I mean, it's not going to destroy the off-road industry. It's not. I mean, it's, no, it would change some stuff. But, I mean, if yeah. you don't think change is going to happen every other day, then you're just crazy anyway, and you're just, you know, you're not an adult. Um, who would have thought five years ago that half of the Jeep groups in the world would be infested with fake parts sellers? Like, who came up with that? Right. And then right. who would think that people would fall for it? So, I mean, there's, you <laughs> right know, like, pull out your 2024 <laughs> bingo card, people. I mean, yeah. if you had 5,000 fake Jeep parts on the Jeep Gladiators only group, and people were falling for it on your bingo card. Congratulations. It's crazy. Like, it's crazy how yeah. you look at these scams and you're like, how do people go for that? Like, people will fall for crap. I don't know. So, um, mm. yeah, I hope it's, you know, you never can tell what's in the future. You can you can logically assume some things. Um, you know, we'll see. I, you know, it's we're not nobody's going away, but there may no. be some, you know, there's always going to be stuff changing, passing around, hand to hand, that kind of stuff. And it'll be interesting to see over the next Especially, I think next year after the election, after all that crap is settled down, um, you you will start to see some things normalize for at least a few years until we do it all again. So, yeah, <laughs> just you yeah. know, it is what it is. Elections make crazy things, especially when you mm -hmm. kind of the economy's not awesome and you got an election, and you know that's kind of been its own crazy thing, and you know, so that just you know you're just stacking crazy on top of crazy. So I uh, you know yeah. we'll see how it plays out. Well, I'm not but going also, here. I'm here, to, here for the as ride, fast yes. as the industry moves, if there are any companies that close down, typically with this industry and automotive in general, um, for every one that closes down, there's two or three businesses oh, that yeah. start. Always somebody. Um, Always somebody. And yeah. with laser cutters and and fabrication equipment being more readily available, I don't want to say like very readily available because it's still very expensive and it's hard to get your hands on, but. If someone wants it bad enough, they can figure out how to make it at small scale and start, you know, scaling up to that. So if someone's got an idea, and I've and just this past year, I think I've seen um, probably three or four new fabrication companies come out and with some good looking stuff. And I'm I'm excited mm -hmm. to see where they where they go from here. Um, but you know, if after the election, that might persuade, depending on how things go, it might persuade people to to start businesses again. So and if that's the case, then I welcome it. 
Yeah, I mean, it's always cyclical, right? I mean, everybody thought mm-hmm. in the late 70s that the world was coming to an end and inflation was high and people were paying in the teens on their interest rates on homes and we're not even there. And then, you know, you could the 80s in, Reagan comes in, you know, you get business, Apple started, micro, all these companies get started. You get, you know, a good four to six years of just heavy, heavy innovation. The tech industry starts, I mean, yeah, technically it started the tech bubble, but, you know, whatever. It's always, I mean, we're humans, man. We can't do anything apparently like right down the middle for very long. We have to either go excessive <laughs> cool. good or excessive bad. And it's just always yeah. this up and down. And I guess it's, you know, welcome to the world, people. Welcome to America. We're either yeah, really, really it. good or really, really bad. We don't know how to do. We just don't know how to do non-drama, live right in the middle. I mean, I think most people do. But, you know, you listen to the far one way or the far the other way, and it's always doom and gloom. And people fall for it sometimes. Unfortunately, people fall for Un- it. Unfortunately. It's not well, that's that bad, to keep, uh, It's also not that good. Yeah. Well, that's something to keep in mind over the next couple months and kind of look at things and you know, kind of get an idea of the next couple of years. Yep. Uh, what I can say, though, is is I'm I'm super glad that Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion seemed pretty successful. I'm uh, I'm glad to know that business was still pretty well there. And uh, I am looking forward, for sure, uh, for participating. Um, speaking of events, we do have another big one, um, the Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam. Yep. Yeah. I, I would almost call it the mini Smoky Mountain Jeep invasion at the beach. Um, for, for sure. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's it's growing it. a ton. And I'm. Oh, I love that. I love that show. I would venture to say I enjoy. And even though I, I'm not a fan of Myrtle Beach, I've never been a fan of Myrtle Beach. Uh, I enjoy the Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam more than Daytona Beach Jeep Week. Jeep Beach. Uh, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, it's, it's not. Yeah. So I, big I don't really know why. Maybe everything. it's because it's not that big. I don't. Yeah. But it's also know. not small that you're not doing anything. No, it's not. Like, there's always and it's gotten bigger do. since COVID because Chris, the organizer down there, he changed when it happened. It used to happen mm-hmm. in the spring, right mm-hmm. around EJS and Jeep Beach, and it was it got very diluted. Yeah. And when he moved it to October, it just went. Shoo. Yep. It just got huge. Yeah. And yeah. um, and he never went back. He did it in 2020, and I think there was talk about doing it spring like two in 2021, and that didn't happen. But mm-hmm. now it stays in the fall, and it yep. is freaking awesome. It's so yeah. good. It's a time when Myrtle Beach typically does not have a ton of people there, mm-hmm. so you can get into you know Airbnbs and stuff, super cheap. You know, I'm I pay like 105 to 120 a night for like a nice yeah two three bedroom condo. Fantastic, with many people yeah. up in it. it's outstanding. I could walk if I wanted to to the um to the to the event space i like right there on 25th is a place called the palms and they're pretty much all airbnb at this point verbo whatever Mm -hmm. and you can actually get out on your patio look to the right you can see the beach crawl coming in the morning it's freaking outstanding it's great i love the event and you know the show's not super huge so it's not like you know sometimes you get into smoky mountain inside and it's like you're club walking everywhere Yep, and it's more open because it's all outside. You know, they got the cool obstacle course. They got the mud pit. You know, they got some cool stuff. Don't know if they got the mud pit this year, but I know they'll have the the obstacle course. Um, it's just a really cool place. And then you know, we've got our party afterwards. You know, we go down to Crooked Hammock. We'll be doing that again this year. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. one of my one of my favorite events. I've had the family down there before. Um, so that you know, it's just a really really great event. Um, and obviously we'll be back down there. Again, this year, and obviously for me, having a camper as well, they have a really, really nice RV res- resort down there that my son absolutely loves. It's got a water park in it. And that's actually between Myrtle Beach and Conway. So we go down there. Uh, I think I've been down there three times to that one this year, mm-hmm. aside from going now back to um, Jeep Jam. So, um, yeah, not a, not a big fan of Myrtle Beach proper, like when it's really high touristy, like right now or you yeah. know, a month ago. But we go down there early season, and then obviously for Jeep Jam, we're down there late season. And I definitely prefer it. I prefer it then and not waiting an hour and a half to get into the taco restaurant. Like it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that place gets insane. But you know, it's a tourist town. Yeah. You know yeah. what tourist town? What tourist town doesn't have that issue during their high season? You know, oh, you go to ski them. resorts. Same thing. Try okay. to go from yeah. Denver to Copper Mountain in the winter. Like <laughs> you'll be in traffic insane. for hours. Yeah, it's every yeah. You know, or you're going to get in lift lines. You know, it's no mm-hmm. matter where you go. It doesn't matter if you go to, you know, Copper Mountain, Steamboat. It does. It doesn't matter. Um, you're going to have that because in the winter time, when they're when it's there on season or Crystal Mountain mm-hmm. up in Washington, whatever. You know, same thing like right now. You know, mountain bike. If you try to go, probably between now and when they close, to these these uh, these ski parks that shut down in the summer and they turn them into mountain bike parks. Sugar Mountain, North Carolina does it. Snowship, West yep. Virginia does it. Beach Mountain does it. 
and you basically throw your, your, your downhill bike on a lift. It takes it up. You grab your bike at the top, and you ride these downhill trails. You're waiting in line for that too. So oh, yeah. you know, touristy Absolutely. stuff is touristy stuff, but there's a reason. That's when it, you know, that's, I can't ride it. I can't go downhill the bike when the snow's on the mountain. I have to do it now. I have I'll to slap some skis on it. There. I mean, don't be scared. Okay. I mean, make a new sport. That's fine. Make a new sport. That's cool. So I mean, that's just what it is. Same you thing. know, you want to go to Jackson Hole, Wyoming? Go to Jackson Hole right now. But it's gonna be it's gonna be freaking busy. Yeah. And in the winter, it's gonna be just forget about it. Oh, so yeah. you know, you got to understand that. But Jeep Jam has done a very good a very good job of doing it at a time when the weather is still outstanding. Mm-hmm. It's not too hot. It's not cold. In a place that has everything you could want out of a tourist destination for the food, the shopping, the, the, the lodging, all of this stuff, and a great, a great venue. That old mall, when they tore it down, it is freaking perfect for yeah, what they do with it. Right in it's the middle of everything. It's yep, outstanding. Love so it. It's, I mean, that one, that one in PCB, Florida Jeep Jam, go back and forth for me for favorite ones. Myrtle Beach tends to win out for me, sorry, Jamie, only because of my proximity to it. Yeah. I, mean, we I can, can be, be there Myrtle in, Beach in three and a half hours from from right here. Yeah, four hours right at here, most. Three and a half hours yeah. up there. Mm-hmm. So Myrtle Beach wins out for that. Um, but PCB has Diego's burritos, so mm. it's tight for me. Yeah. It's tight for no. me. Which my son says at six years old, Diego's is the best burrito he's ever had. I'm just saying. <laughs> he says their burritos are epic, and I quote: well, "Your son epic. has never had King of the Hammers burritos, so I don't know, man. Diego's <laughs> is freaking legit." Because I have for, had KOH burritos. Yeah. For, Although he did uh, have KOH listening. tacos. He did. Yeah, okay, I think yeah. he had some Labu. Okay. I think he had something at Labu Fedora. Uh, okay. I think they ate tacos while we were racing. I think gotcha. I think he had a taco. And those were good too. But Diego's burritos, man. I don't know. I yeah, don't that's one thing I gotta say to our to our listeners yeah. here. If um if you ever wondered what a fantastic taco or burrito is. Go to King of the Hammers one year mm. and uh, stop by the La Bufadora truck. La and you will not. I mean, I think the last time I was there with you, we ate La Bufadora probably once a day. <laughs> At least. Oh, absolutely. You uh, go to was, Hammertown, it you was eat. Incredible. I mean, you don't have to buy groceries. Yeah. yeah no, just go no. buy the tacos. Uh, yeah. For whatever get, reason, yeah. it seems like they just get the food out faster, too. Like, there's yeah. that cowboy taco, outstanding mm-hmm. tacos, but mm-hmm. they always have a stinking line. Yeah. And there's the there's that one heart attack food truck my god i remember some <laughs> some french fry chili abomination that ac right. got adam collin from rock crawler got one year i was like bro you're gonna die <laughs> like, yeah that's right here right now that's a heart attack when, when course, especially when there's like a lack of <sighs> portage i don't mean to oh sound too god. gross on air but like when you're in the desert you might want to not so that's why they have so many portage johns at hammers yeah it's all making sense now. It's all oh, yeah. making sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it just seems like everything out there has a line. Like, you know, the merch trailer during when during, you know, when everybody's actually there. You can wait at 45 minutes in line at the merch trailer. Oh, hammers. easily. But yeah. it seems like I've never I don't think I've ever waited more than like five minutes for tacos at Bufedora. No, no. But they've always got people quick. in line. I don't know how if it's just I don't know if they've perfected that. But he's a they're a food truck normally. That's like that's the guy. Yeah, that's and, he's how a, they and he's a desert they're, racer. Yeah. Yeah, he's a desert racer. He's yeah, got so a pre runner. They're used to out. Yeah, the efficiency I think so. of that. It's got to be. Man, if, if we could get Bufedora at somewhere on the East Coast, that would be wow. incredible. But uh, He yeah, goes to so, Baja, too, and you know I'm going to Baja yeah. next year. So oh, yeah. I'm going to give me some oh, Bufedora yeah. Baja next year. Oh, yeah. Sonata, here I come, baby. Oh, yeah. I think they said – I was talking to Sergio at Jeep Invasion, and we're doing, we made it official. We're doing the Nora 1000, mm-hmm. which is Ensenada, uh, Ensenada to Cabo. So we're yeah. going to do that. I told the wife I'll fly her and the son down to Cabo when it's over. We'll hang out for a few days and then – the only bad part about the Nora 1000, the, what do they call it? The funnest, the funnest rally on earth, the funnest, whatever. Yeah. Is when you're done in Cabo, you have to get the race car back to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. So you have to drive it all the way back up the Baja <laughs> Peninsula. Yep. Eh, at yeah. a somewhat slower pace. At a somewhat slower pace. Yeah. You got to bring it like, I mean, bring it I'm back sure there the are Diego actual paved roads it. you can take up to. Uh, uh, yeah, which, but these are race cars. They're not really street mm, legal, so. That's true. You know. But, well, we'll see. your uh, your favorite cool picture taker guy does have a passport now, and uh, so hey, we- <laughs> all right, dude, so it's amazing we, uh, to tell people you're going to Baja, and everybody's like, "Can I go? What do you need? Do you need somebody yeah. to carry your bags? Do you need somebody to like? Can I roll a tire to somebody? Like, can I can I just look at the, the there? You go to Baja, and everybody wants to be there. And yeah. hey, man, I mean, you and I have talked about that for that, we've talked about this for probably the good better part of the last two years. So. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and thanks to Ultra well, Four and their drama, it's we'll happening next it year. Happen, for sure, <laughs> it's happening next for year. For sure, for uh, sure. Do we have I mean, some I've time had a lot for, of people ask me about that. So, yeah, do we have some time for some bag or are we? Uh, yeah, let's do it. We got. I'm, yeah. I'll make. A, I'll make. The, how many you got? You got two or three for me? I've got three. We'll go through it real quick. Um, okay. Yeah, we won't do like a lightning round, but we'll. we'll get yeah, quick about I'll just it. give. I'll give. Uh, I'll this give out. to the point answers. Shall we? Yeah. Say. So uh, be you'll be it. proud of me. I, I I tried to join a couple new groups just to try to get some new information and kind of broaden our horizons a little bit. Um, so the first question comes from the Taco Nation Facebook group. Um, tacos. Hey, we talk about tacos. A, a question 2024 about tacos. Tacoma. Um, okay. Did not. Yeah, I should have said that. It's like This is a great segue. Tacos to tacos. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Taco Friday. Uh, 2024 Tacoma Taco did questions. not mention what trim package he has but he said i want to run 35s uh tend to hit fire roads and do some very light wheeling not necessarily quote unquote overlanding uh, but maybe tent camping along the way in some spots along B- along blm land and trails my budget's roughly five thousand to start i don't expect to throw a top of the line suspension at it but what's a really good starting point for this new truck well I, i'm gonna blow your budget right away because you have to re-gear for 35s minimum mm-hmm. well, what do you wait, the guy you don't put 35s on a tacoma <laughs> Unless you're gonna go out and yeah. do the stuff you just specifically said you're not gonna do. Yeah. I think Tacoma's, people just have in their heads 35s is just like standard. 285, 70, 17, 33. Like that's yeah. the Tacoma's. That is what Tacoma's want. Yeah. Now, can you put 35s on it? Absolutely. But if you don't re-gear it, you think it's bad on 33s, it's going to be unfriggin' drivable on 33, on 35s. And I can tell mm-hmm. you that most of your 5K budget is gone with a re-gear. Yeah. Three grand. More than half of it. Yeah. It's it's oh it's ju- it's three grand or just a touch over depending on depending on which gear which axles you have. So there's going to be your budget right there, and then you're going to be stuck with like you know a spacer lift or something. So mm-hmm. assuming that I can talk you out of thirty fives um, and do thirty threes, and hopefully you have like a TRD with maybe just a little bit deeper of a gear ratio. I hope. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, so that we can take gearing, not that we should take gearing out of the equation, but let's take gearing out of the equation. Hmm. If your budget is that, then I'm looking at something like an icon stage two, stage three type thing. That's kind of what whatever I was gets too. you, yeah, whatever gets you um, the actual strut replacement, not a mm-hmm. not a spacer kit. If that's your budget, Correct. you don't have to look. You're not looking at a spacer kit. Um, so I would get into that stage where you're going to get um, UCAs, and you're going to get a full strut replacement on the front. Now you don't need. I think stage five maybe maybe four where they go to the whole leaf pack replacement um with what you're talking about you don't need that you can do the add a leaf thing because the way icon does it's really cool you can change where that leaf goes and it changes the amount of lift you get it so it it, it can go nice. based on what kind of weight you're carrying in the back um i've done that if i've done that once i've done it a hundred times on tacos at the shops so that's a really good one and it keeps the budget down because you're not buying entire spring pack so you yeah. can go get like the two fives um their strut assembly with the ucas you get the rear shocks you get the rear out leaf and that's going to be that's definitely going to stay in your budget uh if you want to if you want to maximize the budget you can look at something from dobinson's they ch- tend to be a little cheaper i don't i wouldn't give it quite icon quality icon is kind of my go-to for toyotas mm-hmm. um, i ran it on my gen 3 tacoma and i ran it all over utah uh, ran it all over the country because um, it drove out and then it uh, it drove back. So mm-hmm. I've I've done that, um, been there, seen that, done all that. So I know that that stuff works. So I would go with Icon and and the highest stage you can get for your budget. And just it's going to take it's you know just expect to spend depending on what level you get five to eight hundred in labor, maybe mm-hmm. nine hundred if you get higher up in there, because it's going to take some time to pull those leaf packs out and do the out leaf. You got to disassemble those. And then you're pulling the, um, you're actually pulling out the control arms, you're pulling out the strut, you're doing all that stuff. Um, so as long as you're getting that, you know, a level two, level three uh, kit, then I think you're going to be fine. You're going to hit that budget, no problem, no problem. And then you can start putting that budget towards, you can put, start putting that budget towards tires and whatnot. You could easily do, you could easily do a lift and some tires in that budget. You could do that. You could absolutely do that. You got to watch what you buy, mm-hmm. you know. You gotta watch what you buy. You could do, you know, there, there's so many options. I won't get into so many options, but you can definitely do it. But I would, the first thing I would do is iconvehicledynamics.com. That's where I would go. Yeah, absolutely. That's got to be the start, and then call That's out. Kind of what I was thinking too. 
Second question, uh, Wrangler JL Facebook group. I know I pull a lot of them from here, but it's just so easy. <laughs> yeah, but which group is it? Because there's like 50. Like I yeah. looked at one today that uh, I'm the admin on. 71,000 members. Oh, yeah. I had yeah. to go in and boot somebody out. 71,000. I was like, holy crap. I remember when it was like 5,000 people. Yeah. It's insane. Oh, they they so keep crazy. growing. Yeah, um, this do. one was kind of funny because I dealt with it <laughs> in a buddy's Jeep. Uh, my visors keep falling down and are constantly loose. What the hell is the fix for this? <laughs> a Don't 21. buy a JL or a JT. <laughs> That's the fix. They all suck. They break. There is a little yeah. bracket that somebody um, sells, and it's on every frigging group, but they're just notorious yeah. for it. So it's on, I think there's one on Amazon, too. I forget what it is. But you know yeah, what's funny, though? seems to be a I've owned issue. how many JLs and JTs, and I've never had that happen to me. Knock on knock on whatever this material is, I don't, plastic, I don't, whatever this is. I don't think you keep uh, them long enough with the... with the. That's fair. Hey, the Reaper, of, no, Reaper. no, 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 no. Reaper is six years old, <laughs> and it's never happened. I had the Gladiator for three years almost three years two and a half years never had it happen now granted the four by e is yeah and then the wife had a rubicon for a little while uh she had a hydro blue rubicon sky one touch all that stuff mm -hmm. and i've never seen it now i'm not saying it's on an issue it is i've seen it hundreds of times it is there issue. is a little bracket you can buy it on amazon <laughs> everybody makes it it's just this little i mean there's even guys now making little 3d printed it's basically just a brace yeah. uh, it is a very very common problem the way they did that arm trying to make it look like a power tube in a bank's diesel exhaust system <laughs> it's so dumb i don't know why they did that i'm like Did, right. i thought you guys were engineers like i'm not uh, an engineer and i know that's a weird really, point and they it hired the junior there. engineer so, for that oh one. my god scott that was Bloom, that was at? a day one design <laughs> day one design his first day on the job yeah god. But and it, uh, yeah it's a known issue it's definitely yeah, a known, issue. known issue like so there's i think there's parts on amazon or three there brackets is. that people yeah, print is. or they have the file if you have a 3d printer you yeah. can print it yourself it's not too hard. i mean and you can go back um, and get it done under warranty but it's going to happen again. It might it, happen it, again. More than uh, likely. It just is what it is. And then I, our last question from our favorite group ever, the Gladiators Only Facebook group. God, I, uh, I hate to love that group, and I love to hate that group. I know. It's so good. So, so good. this one, this one's kind of great. I thought it was off to a really good start, and then it just dumpster fired. <laughs> after that. Um what are the best skid places to put on a 2022 Gladiator? I'm getting into trailing and crawling and would rather play it safe than sorry. And then here's where he lost me. I have a six and a half inch coilover lift on 40s. Are they necessary or should I be fine in clearance for most trails and scenarios not to need skid plates? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, again, we started off great. If he would have just ended the question after I'm getting into trail riding and crawling, I would have been like, man, hell yeah, this guy's great. Like, here, here's some good suggestions. And then I saw the last part of this of six and a half inch, inch lift in 40s and questioning whether he needs the skid plates because he has so much clearance. And I'm like, yep, this one's going okay. on the podcast. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a feeling that this guy's version <laughs> of trailing and off-roading is a dirt road with a water ditch. Probably. Six and a half freaking inches. I don't understand that. Hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. <sighs> it's a lot know. i you know it's i'm gonna excessive. ignore that i'm I'm gonna choose to ignore that part of the question and i'm just gonna say that i really like our tech and next venture motorsport skid plates <laughs> that's <laughs> done <laughs> it's, it's the two that i have run after tons and tons of research there's our tech is on a modified our tech is on reaper mm -hmm. um and then next venture motorsports has Skid plates on the four by E. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing, the one thing I really liked about the Artec, which I think put it above some of the other ones, is it actually replaced. It did not go on over top of or in addition to the factory skids. It replaced mm -hmm. them. Yeah, and it was something like three quarters of an inch difference in net ground clearance, which is which is significant. Yeah. So that's why I like the Artec and the JL, and then I like the Next Venture, of course, on the four by because just the amount of freaking coverage is stupid. It's and it's got my slick cutting board, you know, synthetic mm -hmm. hockey ice stuff on the bottom that you, you MHW, that's freaking awesome. It looks awesome. Yes. I got a lot of comments on that at um, Cheap Invasion. People would ask about Actually, it. what's on that? Because of that, I am I'm going to reach slick. out to to Dan and, and get him the measurements of because I've I've got to get build and get a uh, engine skid for the LJ as well as the belly system from Rock Crawler. That's already welded on. I'm gonna send those sizes off to Dan and see if he can price me out on cutting um, some UHMW, so I, yeah. I can I can put that under there because I think it's pretty that's awesome. A freaking awesome idea, as a dude. You can't get stuck layer. on rocks. No, you can't get stuck. <laughs> Just like hey, hey, bro, uh, come push my bumper real quick. 
What? <laughs> Done. Like Done. it's it's game changer stuff, man. It's absolute yeah. game changer. So, no, yeah, as soon that, as I saw that's him doing that on everything I'm else, gonna, I'm like, I want this. I'm not going to talk about your six and a half coil inch coil over. No, lift, we're gonna we're gonna, gonna ignore that part. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna ignore that part. I'm gonna tell you. you it doesn't matter what your tire size, your lift height. You still. Yeah, I'm just gonna tell you. You, next you don't have. You're not a skyscraper. You're, you're still gonna rub your belly on rocks somewhere. Um, I mean, he's he's so, pretty freaking close to skyscraper status. I mean, pretty much. He's pretty, but, dang, he's pretty freaking close. Yeah. Um, for for that, yeah, definitely go next venture or or our tech and, and be done. You with know it. what though? That is that is par for the course coming out of that group. Oh, a hundred percent. I expected no less. I was actually about to be very impressed for that first half, and then after that, I was like, oh, yep, we're we're back in gladiator. That was actually a pretty solid question for like <laughs> the first forty five and a half percent, and the last mm, sixty four and a half percent was garbage. Yeah. 54 and a half. My math was bad. I blame mm. the I blame the day quill. That's all right. But that's all yeah. I've got for you today. That's okay. it. We do have I put this out on Facebook uh, a couple nights ago on my personal Facebook. I am looking at planning an overland adventure next year. Um, it's not gonna be anything I'm gonna charge people for. I think what we'll probably do is do it as like an outlaw off road overland adventure thing where mm -hmm. we do like an entry fee as a donation to hero off road like we yeah. did with trail days. I'm like, um, that. yeah, I think I'm gonna do that, but limit it. Um, I saw something that Brad Lovell did years ago, the Amsoil Adventure or something, and he did it with an old Willis, I think is what he did it with, like an old 43 nice. or something like that. And they went up over the mountains, and they ended up in Moab. And I've kind of looked at that route that he did, and with some minor modification, that could be a really, really cool route and hit some really, really cool places. We could do a bunch of the passes. We could do Rim Rocker. We could do uh, Grand Mesa. You can camp out up on Grand Mesa outside of Grand Junction. Mm -hmm. It'd be a freaking great trip, so... Um, I'll, I'll probably come to that. I, I doubt there's, I don't know. I doubt there's going to be signups for it. Cause I feel like, I feel like those spots are just going to be taken <laughs> immediately. Like immediately. Yeah. I mean, if I limit it to 12, including me, you know, that's 11 other people. I just feel like they ain't going to be no sign up for that. But, um, there was signups for trail days, uh, which I think is coming to an end this Friday. Cause we got to get the shirt order in today for of, we gotta get the shirt yeah oh yeah tonight yeah that's episode, right it's, yeah. it's over today that's it today it's is over. The we're not going day. through the weekend um we're not going which i mean i only weekend. had one or two spots available anyways right. um so it, it was pretty much fully packed out we definitely got to get Good. shirt orders in um yeah, so yeah we got to get the shirt order off. in i got to start planning you know groups i got to start doing i've got i've got the trails in my head i want to run but i don't need to start sectioning out stuff into groups and mm -hmm. who goes where on friday who goes where on saturday um that is now for me uh, I come home and three days later I'm in knee surgery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was going to lead one of the advanced groups and be getting in and out and climbing on rocks and spotting and all that. I am not going to do that now. I'm going to leave yeah, that to do more, that more knee stable people. And I will probably be leading either. I'll either go. I actually really like leading beginner groups. So I'll either lead a beginner group if nobody else wants to, or I will take one of the more beginner intermediate groups. Cause again, I like, I like beginner groups. I think that's, it's so much fun for me to see people kind of really nervous and kind of sketchy morning one, day one, and then to see the progress the if they've never gone boost. on road before. I love yeah. it. I mean, I we go do stupid stuff, but I usually do that with people I know, and we mm -hmm. all party the same way. But I really like going with beginners that I've never met by the end of the weekend. They know you. You know them. You know, they're starting to talk about modifying this, and I'm going to do this lift, and I'm going to do that, and they do this, and then they just become friends forever. So, And yeah. I can't tell you how many people I've met that way and still to this day know from just doing beginner's rides. It's pretty awesome. So yeah, um, I'll absolutely. make that call later. But yeah, I got to have to keep keep in mind that the old the old knee is getting a little snip snip on, yeah, uh, yeah. I think, September 17th is the day. So I may be like this on that podcast that week. Like, <laughs> I can't put any weight on it. Yeah. But they tell right. me I'm going to be, they tell me within like 24 to 48 hours, I'll be back walking around and everything. He says, you know, we're just going to go in there and cut out some meniscus He's like, there's really no internal healing. You just have to heal the incisions where we go in there with the scope and the little snip snips. Yeah. So um, hopefully I'll be back up because I think 10 days after that, I'm supposed to be running a mud run with my son, a mud obstacle course. 10 days after nice. surgery, baby. <laughs> I am I am fully be, anticipating throwing a knee be, sleeve on that knee and running. Light, lightly jogging, but. It, <laughs> I mean, it's I at the pace of a six-year-old. So, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, I've done yeah, it before. So I did. I did a. I told my wife the other day. I was like, I did a Spartan race, Beast, which was, it's a half marathon. You know, it was. Yeah. It ended up being like fourteen and a half miles. It's the, at the time, it was the longest one they had, for getting what they called a trifecta, which is where you did all three distances they had in a single season, and that was my last one. And I had torn my meniscus, and it was not surgical, so we were letting it heal. And so I ran that. 
I ran that beast 14 and a half miles with an e-sleeve on my right and was running it. You know, we weren't competitively running it, but we were running it for time. There were six of us yeah. running it. And two of us were running it for our trifecta because that was the year I did like the Spartan trifecta and I did like five Tough Mudders and like a couple of Go Rucks and something stupid. And I told my wife that and I was like, yeah, I did it then. She goes, you realize that was 10 years ago, right? Like you were 10 years younger. And I was like, no, I, whoa. <laughs> whoa, hold on. Crap. <laughs> it's like, damn it. Yeah. And it was, it was 2014. It was November of, wow. it was November in Asheville. Uh, the Black Mountain um, Beast. Or no, I ran the Black Mountain Super. I don't remember. The Beast I ran, I think it's South Carolina. I think I ran the South Carolina down at that ATV park down in like Wynwood or something like that. Um, yeah, that was 20 freaking 14. Mm. Insane. Insane. Well, best of luck to you on yeah. We'll see how on your future we'll how mudding in Denver. <laughs> All right, before I get before I start telling people how old I really am, we're going to end this episode right now. Just kidding, but we are going to end this episode. So, as always, we do end it. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us um, and our bouncing around little little fun we had today. My little joke I played on Caleb, not telling him really what we were going to do or what we we're going to talk about. I just hit record. And hit the countdown. I'm sure he was going, uh, what's this idiot for Hang on, hang on. <laughs> we didn't discuss on, what this. What is this idiot doing? <laughs> but yeah. sometimes I'm just an idiot. You know what? So, you know, whatever. So thank you guys a lot so much for making it, you know, being able to do what we do here. And, you know, to the point we're moving, you know, don't forget we are moving channels and moving over to that Law Off-Road channel with this number, episode number uh, 41. Uh, make sure on YouTube that you are hitting that like and subscribe button with the notification bell. And also wherever you else you get your podcast, YouTube podcast, Spotify, Apple podcast, all those places um, and and more to come in the future if we need that. But I know that um, doing pretty good, pretty happy with pretty happy with where we're at. Um, can't believe you guys actually want to listen to us and watch us and all that good stuff. But hey, as long as you guys keep coming, we'll keep doing it. Um, got any Absolutely. ideas? Obviously, as always, give us the ideas. Drop it in the comments. Tell us, you know, questions, comments, concerns, show ideas, whatever. Uh, we do this once a week. We need 52, at least 50, you know, ideas for shows every single year, people, at least 50. So that while there are some, I'm not going to say there's no dumb ideas. There are dumb ideas. Let's be honest. But <laughs> most of them are not dumb. <laughs> and even if it's a dumb idea, maybe I can kind of massage it into a decent show idea. You never know. Right. You never know. You know, uh, if you got an event you want us to mention on there, uh, on the show, um, let us know, hit us up, shoot us a message on the Facebook page at dirt to dust show. Uh, or at Dirt to Dust Podcast. It's one of those two. You'll go find it. Go find it. Just type at Dirt to Dust and you'll figure it out. Just look for the logo. Um, or hit us up at, at The Outlaw Off-Road, either on Instagram or on Facebooks. <sighs> Another episode done. That's Another it. Friday down. Yep. <laughs> Can't wait to watch some football this weekend. Think Ohio State. I'm pretty sure Ohio State's going to be Akron, but We'll give the report on give the report on Monday. I'll give a little nod to App State. I think App State's playing this weekend. They should be opening this weekend, right? I want to say yes. Yeah, they gotta be right. It's it's last week was week zero. This is week one. Like week one officially started uh, today. I think they think there's some games tonight, but the big games obviously uh, all the big games are tomorrow. But it yeah. mostly it's cream puff games. But you know what? It's college football. I'm not a huge fan of the NFL. I I have a passing interest in the Bengals, um, but the NFL is just not college. No, and you know, and even college isn't what it used to be with NIL, but it's still college. And they're still out there playing for, yes, a lot of them make money, but a lot of them don't. And a lot of them will never do it again. Most of them will never do it again. So this yeah. is their shot to do it. And I think this it just feels, college football, especially in the Big Ten and the SEC, it just feels different. Yeah. Right? And this year with, with, with the Pac-12 going away, basically for football purposes, a lot of those coming into the Big Ten, re, you know, conference realignment, all that. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I think this is the, we've got the first year of the, um, it's a 12-team playoff, I think, right? It's 12. Yeah. The twelve team playoffs can be freaking insane. So we got college coming up. We're only a little over a month until NHL hockey season starts again. That's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, it's gonna be great. <laughs> it's the Canes year. Actually, I don't think it is. I don't think the Canes are gonna be as good mm. as they are last year with the moves. I know, I know. Mm. But in my house, because I have a hockey playing son, we watch like ten teams. Yeah. He follows the Kraken. He's got hockey practice tonight and he's wearing a Seattle Kraken. No, tonight he changed his mind. He's wearing Las Vegas Golden Knights. To hockey practice. Hey, I like, he I likes like the, the Knights. Knights. He okay. likes the Knights because of the pre game show that they do where the Golden Knight defeats whatever dragon for the other team. <laughs> and coincidentally, yeah. he's like 315 and 0. The, the Golden Knight of the Las Vegas Golden Knights, he has never lost the battle, people. No. He is undefeated. He is <laughs> the Las Vegas Golden Knight, and he is undefeated. <laughs> 
and he has even beat the Kraken once or twice from Seattle. So he's a Seattle Kraken fan. He loves all that. He's a huge fan of the Dallas Stars, literally, because their main color is green. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, yeah, that's a good reason. I like it. <laughs> all the reasons he has are really, really. Uh, he likes the Kraken logo. He likes the Colorado Avalanche because he thinks the Avalanche is the coolest logo in the NHL. Yeah, I kid you not. I mean, I mean I kid your you kid's not. pretty cool. So I'm, when yeah. he thought that <laughs> when I told him, I think the Utah hockey club is going to be the Utah Yeti that he thinks that will be his new favorite team next year if they ever get a name. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think this year they're not going to do a name. They're just Utah HC, but we'll see what comes of that. They'll, he'll probably want he's got like seven hockey jerseys in his closet. I'm not kidding. It's crazy. He's got like seven or eight hockey jerseys and he's got like three or four soccer jerseys. He's got like two or three Lionel Messi jerseys. He's got a uh, Charlotte FC jersey. Um, yeah, the kid, the, he loves, he loves those sports, which is what I grew up loving. Yeah. And then he loves lacrosse. He loves lacrosse. Also cool. He was playing lacrosse. Also cool. And the kid will take hits and then get up and come out of half them like, did you see the hit I took? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I would have rather you shot than take the hit, but he's so proud of just taking hey. hits in lacrosse. It's awesome. So, all right, I digress. Do. That's how we're going to leave it guys. Um, we'll give you the, uh, the whole college football report next week, you know, whatever, but go out, watch some football, unless you're a South Canada university fan or AKA Michigan. AKA that team up north. Yeah. We don't thank any of you for watching. Go back to Canada, people. <laughs> Michigan people. Ugh. Uh. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, we'll take care of business on Thanksgiving weekend this year. Anyway, until next week, <sighs> thank y'all for stopping by. Okay. Thanks for putting up with me for yet again. And we will see you guys on the next episode later. You've been listening to the dirt to dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.